can we just appreciate my Taylor Swift Lover album tracklist t-shirt? which was the collab by Taylor Swift and Stella McCartney. I thought I need to announce this because it cost me freaking 55 pounds. So I may as well put it at the start of my video. I'm not gonna lie, I am so much more tired now that I work in an acute hospital than mental health. But here I am on a Friday, ready to film another video for you. So hi, and welcome to my video. Today I'm gonna talk to you about some tips on solo travel. So I got a message on Instagram from somebody who just said, I like your pharmacy videos. And basically I just wanna know if you have any solo travel tips. And I thought, actually, that's such a good video idea. So thank you for writing that message. And here it is. So my first tip is choose somewhere that you have never been before. Now I know it could be easy to just think to yourself, you know what, maybe I'll just go to Italy because I've already been there with my friends and I liked it at the time and it feels familiar. No, choose somewhere that you've never actually been before because that way you can make it your own. So recently I went to Oslo, Norway and that was my first ever solo trip. And now every time I think about Norway, I'll just be like, I went there on my own and that was my first ever solo trip. It didn't bring up memories of the past. I wasn't like, oh, I went there with my friends or like there with an ex or whatever. It was just totally mine. So choose somewhere that you can make your own, somewhere that you've never been before, that your family hasn't taken you, a clean slate. Now, if you are a little bit scared about solo traveling, hence why you might be watching this video, I would say go somewhere that you actually do know someone that you're not close enough to so that you'd stay with them, but that you could ask for help if you need to. So I know somebody called Daniel in Oslo and I already did the ticketing and stuff before he even said he had time to see me. But once I was there, like I just felt so much more comfortable knowing that, okay, if an emergency happens, I at least know that Daniel is in the city. And it ended up being really nice. We did have dinner together and stuff and it was really nice to catch up but I also stayed at my own place and he didn't, you know, take me around or anything. So it was still my solo trip and it was my trip and it was my solo trip. But I knew that if I had issues, I could call him. If you think you're gonna get lonely and you need to be distracted, choose an activity every day. So I had an activity planned for every day that I was in Oslo. So the first day was the sauna, when I jumped into like 10 degrees freezing water and then there's a sauna like right by the opera house. The second day I had plans to meet Daniel and the third day, what did I do on the third day? Yeah, I went on a cruise. And for these activities, I'd planned them all before I went on the trip. So I knew what each day kind of looked like. And I'm saying this because I mean, yeah, it might be your thing to just turn up and decide, you know what, I'll just decide what to do on the day. But if you're anything like me and you are worried and you think, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? Am I gonna be okay? Um, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna be lonely? Am I gonna be freaking out? Then just have an activity planned. And I also recommend that you plan these activities and pay for them in your home country. So I know it sounds quite dumb, but I do get confused with currencies when I go abroad. And so if someone told me like a cruise was, I don't know, 200, 200 Norwegian kron, krona, kron, I'd be like, um, okay, I don't know how much that is. And uh, I could calculate it there and there on the spot, but it just doesn't seem to be the best idea. So what I did was I looked up all of the activities to do before I went so that I could pay them in British pounds and therefore I didn't have to like exchange money and stuff. And I knew, okay, that cruise is like 50 pounds, that cruise is like 20. And I just chose one that was like in between and I knew what I was doing money wise. So have an activity planned out. And also if you can, and if you're anything like me, pay for it in your own home country. Okay, so for your safety, as you are traveling alone, have uh, travel buddies. And for, for me, it was, you know, safe contacts on Uber. So I got an Uber really late at night, like every night for Norway. Each time I did that, I had safe contacts. And people in London, like my friend Angie and my housemate Will, they knew what journey I was doing, like what journey I was on. And I know they're not in the same country as me, but at least if anything went wrong, there's a record of where you are. And I also had travel buddies like my family, where I told them exactly where I was staying, the address of my Airbnb. And uh, with internet connection, obviously I was just updating them constantly on where I was and stuff. I feel like I've got this fear of being kidnapped in a foreign country. And for me, like that was kind of my lasting evidence. Like, okay, she was there. So if something happened to me, they'd be able to track me. 
Another tip I have is choose somewhere where you can actually rest in. So I really liked the fact that I chose Oslo because it wasn't crazy crazy. Like say I went to Santorini on my own, I don't necessarily think I'd have liked that. I think because I've, it was so lovely I wanted to enjoy it and I did enjoy it with my best friend Miri. But Oslo to me, um, and sort of like the Scandinavian countries or like colder places, I think that they are countries where you can just think to yourself, okay, there's activities to do, but if I want to come back and rest, I can also rest. Don't feel the pressure to constantly be out doing stuff. If that is your thing and you prefer doing that, then by all means do that. But I think solo travel also does mean having time to just relax, time to yourself. So in Oslo, I didn't feel pressured to be constantly out doing activities. I was like, oh, I feel quite tired. I'll go back to the Airbnb and it was really nice. Solo travel isn't all about getting all the activities done. I think it's time to calm down, relax and feel no pressure and enjoy just being by yourself. Embrace the lonely. So there will be moments when you do think to yourself, um, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing this. Am I okay? Uh, is this crazy? Like, am I actually enjoying myself? Um, you can overthink. There are moments where I thought, oh my gosh, I'm actually by myself right now. Like, this is so weird. But embrace that. Don't think, shit, what am I gonna do? Just think, okay, I'm by myself. How can I enjoy just being in my own company? It was so weird going to like restaurants and stuff on my own and then being like, how many? And I'm like, table for one. But then once I just continued doing that, it felt fine, I'd just listened to some music. One thing I do regret, which is my next tip, is not starting a good book. So I've recently started an amazing book and I really wish that I'd actually started this before I went away because that way I would have absolutely loved reading this in Norway. But unfortunately I bought it when I came back and started it now and I am almost at the end. But start a good book before you go so that you're not constantly on the internet and you're not constantly on your phone and that you can just sit around places on your own and actually delve into another world like i am immersed in a different world right now and i absolutely would have adored reading this book on a bench in norway so start something before you go so that when you're on your trip you can really 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 enjoy it and books make you feel less lonely. I remember being in school and having no internet, because we didn't really have internet then, and not having many friends. And through the summer holidays, books were my friends. And so it kind of brings me back to that point right now. And I feel like books are my friends again. And it's really helping me to embrace being on my own. So start a good book before your journey. My last tip is if going abroad sounds way too overwhelming and just not up your street or you're not allowed to go then just try another city that you've never ever been to i actually think that could be a better idea than going abroad for the start of for like to initiate this whole solo trip thing because then there's no like exchanging money hassle going to the airport hassle coming back from the airport hassle just take a bus or a train go to a city you've never been to see what's around you don't have to waste accommodation money because you can get the train back you don't have to have cash in another currency so start off with a city if another country is too much and then build yourself up from there. I actually think I might get addicted to self-travel, like solo travel. I mean, also it wasn't my favorite country, but I'm so proud that I did it and I really enjoyed it. Push yourself. I never thought I'd be jumping into 10 degrees water opposite Oslo Opera House, but I did it. And just, yeah, I'm doing things, a lot of things this year where I'm out of my comfort zone and surprising myself and I think that's the best way to keep improving. Surprise yourself. Make yourself into someone you never thought you would be, but in a good way. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed my video and thank you for the person on Instagram who messaged me and gave me this video idea. Speaking of Instagram, I recently completely got rid of my old Instagram and started a new one, Clean Slate. And I feel like I had a lot of residue in my old Instagram where like I, I, didn't, un I didn't really want to unfollow people because I still liked everyone that I followed, but I wasn't necessarily close to all of them. And I kind of just wanted a new fresh start. So I started a new Instagram and it's completely private, but I am open to people who do watch my YouTube videos and people who are interested in pharmacy or just not into pharmacy, but just watch my videos to follow me. And so if you would like to follow me and you want to chat to me or you want to ask me any questions, then send me a direct message with the word pharmacy. Is that too boring? Uh, river. Yeah, send me the word river because I've got this book in my hand. 
and I will accept your following request. You know it's sometimes easier to have strangers follow you than people who you went to uni with and never speak to anymore, that kind of thing. So yeah, send me the word river through direct message and if you do that, that will be the unlocking word to follow my Instagram if you want to, if you don't, that's also fun. So I hope you have a great day, I hope this video was a little bit helpful and I'm always answering back on YouTube to all of your comments and I also answer on direct message. So feel free to say hi and yeah, I'll see you in the next video, bye!